Now let's address our final topic, which is on emerging technologies and the future of education and work. So your insightful perspectives on the prevailing megatrend of emerging technologies impacting education and employment are very thought-provoking. So like, what guidance would you offer to young enthusiasts to prepare for their future studies and navigate the rapidly evolving landscape of this exciting and challenging field? Wow, yeah, I get that a lot. Um, so I'm biased. I, I always, I've been always science trained. Um, so I always encourage parents. Um, yes, uh, lots of my colleagues are parents and some of them are grandparents already. Yes, that's, that's how old I am. Um, so uh, advice to their kids and grandkids would be uh, do, do encourage the kids when young to embrace STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and maths in STEM. Uh, Singapore has always embarked on emphasizing that, so which is a joy to work with because whenever I go to a fellow government agency and I talk to the CEO of the agency, they, they're all very open to innovative ideas. Like, like I, I, I even went to the Energy Markets Authority and you know, a few years ago they were telling me Oh, Basil, we should look at geothermal. And I said, what? Singapore so small? Can is it? And I said, yeah, yeah, we're exploring it. You know, you never know. There might be enough of a heat source underneath Singapore to, to, to do geothermal. So, yeah. So, so it's, it's wonderful when you start talking to all these uh, heads of agencies. And they're all, they all tend to be STEM trained when they were young. Um, I mean, once again, being biased, it, my, my cohort, they all tend to be very scientifically trained now. And uh, of course, then they some of them subsequently went to do an MBA because in the in the business world you need to understand that. But you can always do that at a later stage. I think when when you're younger, the, the hard difficult concepts, the hard sciences, it's good to tackle them when you're young, right? Uh, and then you can have a very solid foundation. And then once once you understand all the hard sciences, uh, uh, not not to belittle business education, but uh, it's, then you can also grasp the complexities of uh, business management, management models as well. Uh, but, you know, for example, you study physics, everything comes from first principles, right? So it, it's a very good training. Same for maths. Maths, you always start out with certain first principles and then you, you, know, you come up with the formula. Um, th those are very good foundations to build on. And then from there, you know, as, as then you take on more social studies, uh, more economics, more business uh, kind of uh, um, courses, uh, then that's when the complexities of human nature comes in, which is not easy sometimes, yeah. Uh, why was this done instead of that? Why was Sam Altman fired by that board? Then you understand, oh, because the board's mandate is different. So uh, you need to understand those things as well, not, not just physics and maths. But, I would suggest have a solid STEM education first for the kids uh, before graduating to the more complex social sciences. Yeah. yeah. All right, so thank you for sharing the importance of STEM education and I really do agree that it is quite crucial in this um, age where there's so many like emerging technologies that is driving our um, future innovation and uh, drive to like, sustainability. So um, other than perhaps STEM, especially for like kids from a young age, um, what other skills and perhaps training could these um, kids or like students undergo such that they can not only survive but like thrive in this like dynamic kind of environment with all these different technologies arising. Yeah. I, I think the, the crucial thing is always be receptive to learning new things, right? Uh, it's not like, oh yes, I passed my PSLE, I passed my O levels, I passed my A levels, uh, you know, and then finally I've done my first degree, I've made my parents happy. That that shouldn't be the way things you, you don't do things for others. You do things because you you want to keep learning. Right? I, even I'm still learning, right? Yeah. In fact, I always joke that my PhD is pretty redundant now because uh, the technology has moved on so quickly. So you, you always have to be, be in that mode where you keep learning and know what, to, what questions to ask. I mean, thanks to the advent of, of you know, the chat GPTs of the world, there, there are so many great AI tools that are productivity tools. So you don't need to memorize things, but you need to be able to ask the right questions. So your, your mind must always be uh, uh, asking why, yeah. Um, so it is uh, imperative lah. Uh, always tell people, never retire, always keep learning. Uh, then you also age well. Uh, you also um, delay the onset of dementia and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease because you keep exercising your brain, which effectively is like a muscle, uh, you use it or you lose it. 
So I would encourage everyone, you know, through, you know, your whole lifespan, always try to learn something new. Uh, it, it also, and, you know, and opens up a lot of uh, new, um, even for career progression, right? It, it enables you to be more, you know, extremely relevant to society if you keep learning the, the latest things. Yeah, I really do agree that it's important to like not lose your hunger and thirst for knowledge and to ask like the salient questions in life. So like, thank you so much Dr. Louis for graciously sharing your profound insights on harnessing emerging technologies for a sustainable future. This enlightening discussion at the PASCO Forum has provided invaluable perspectives. As we collectively strive for a sustainable future, we aspire to continue fostering innovation and collaboration for the betterment of our global community. So thank you for gracing us with your presence today. Likewise, thanks. Thanks for inviting me to this, and uh, I hope that I have uh, given some nugget of uh, you know wisdom, if you want to call it that. But um, yeah, um, never retire. Just keep learning. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.